Now, what would happen if you consume mostly healthy whole grains for one month? Well, if you haven't tried that experiment, you might wanna try it. I did it pretty much my whole life, all the way until I was, I think, 28 years old, roughly about five years ago. And I would say it probably wasn't the best experiment to do in my body, but I was really consuming a lot of what I thought were healthy whole grains. You know, the cereals, the breads, the pasta, the, the crackers, things like that. So let's do a whole deep dive on these healthy whole grains to dissect uh, some of the component parts. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is fiber, right? Because they always say like, um, you know, if you eat whole grains, uh, you're, you're getting like two to three times the fiber uh, compared to refined grains. Well, yes, that might be true, but grains don't really have a lot of fiber to begin with. I mean, even like brown rice only has like 4% fiber. That is not high. So one cup of rice has about 0.4 grams of fat. So it's really low in fat. It has about 45 grams of carbohydrate, which is extremely high, yet it only has 0.6 grams fiber. That's a, a very tiny amount. And it has about 4.3 grams of protein. That's pretty low too. Now, what about multigrain bread? Well, we have 1.7 grams of fat, so that's pretty low. And we're talking about like one slice, okay? It has 18 grams of carbs, which is quite high, yet only three grams of fiber and about five grams of protein. Now, if you take celery, for example, that's like 50% fiber, like spinach, like just one cup, 50% fiber and only four grams of carbs. So you really want to get your fiber from vegetables, not grain. And the next point I want to talk about is, I mean, no one really consumes just 100% whole grain. They consume products with whole grains, which come with refined grains, and they come with refined sugar, and a lot of chemicals, and a lot of other things. And I've never met one person who would just take the whole grain and eat that, okay? They usually have it uh, when it's turned into flour, right? I mean, who eats just whole grains, right? Like you're gonna put in the cereal, you might uh, cook them or soak them or something, but people don't do that. They grind them or mill them into some flour and then they make another product. So when they mill it or grind it into flour, they then expose it to air. So you're gonna lose nutrition just from that. You're gonna get oxidation, especially with vitamin E and any other fat-soluble vitamins. So oxygen destroys the fat-soluble vitamins. Not to mention that flour that you buy that you're gonna make into certain products have been sitting on the shelf for quite some time. So the more exposed to air it is, the more time, the less nutrition. But that's not the real big thing. The big thing to me is that if you're going to consume something in a flour-based product, when you eat that broken down grain, which basically exposes more surface area of that grain, to your digestive enzymes, you're gonna get a spike in blood sugars simply because 80% of that grain is starch. And starch is a bunch of little glucose molecules stuck together. So when you heat it or you grind it or you process it in some way, the digestive enzymes are gonna turn that so-called healthy complex carbohydrate into simple carbohydrates as a bunch of glucose molecules. So basically, it's very similar to eating sugar. And yes, it depends how much you eat. But in this video, we're talking about if you're going to be consuming mostly whole grains. Now, the glycemic index is basically it means how um, fast that product spikes your blood sugars between whole grains and refined grains are not significant. They're pretty close. So that's one issue. But the other issue is um, these grains, especially whole grains, have a lot more phytic acid than refined grains. And so what is phytic acid? Phytic acid is an anti-nutrient. It's something that inhibits your absorption of zinc, calcium, iron, magnesium. And this could lead to all sorts of deficiencies, especially in children. I'm gonna talk about that in a bit. And then we get to the topic of gluten. Certain grains have gluten. That's the protein in certain grains and gluten is very, very damaging to your intestines and it can irritate the intestine. It can create inflammation. It can create leaky gut. It's linked to um, hypothyroidism, especially Hashimoto's, 
and other autoimmune diseases. So if you have a thyroid problem, you shouldn't be consuming any grains whatsoever. But gluten either creates an allergy or it's a gluten intolerance. So a lot of people cannot tolerate gluten. And it's really surprising to me that even certain keto products have um, wheat gluten because it's a protein, but it's highly inflammatory. So why would you want to have that in your product? And then lastly, we have the problem of uh, Roundup or um, glyphosate, which is an herbicide which is almost always added to wheat, even though wheat typically is not a genetically modified uh, seed, but they still add it. So you can imagine the effects that that can create on our bodies. So the big problem by consuming mostly high grains are number one, the glycemic index, how fast it's going to spike your blood sugars. Now, the types of grains that we eat nowadays are way different than what we used to consume way back in time. Nowadays, we have hybrid grains that are very, very high in carbs and also high in phytic acid. So what's going to happen when you consume these grains? It's going to affect your blood sugars. It's going to affect your mood, okay? Talking about having more anxiety, possibly depression um, because of the, the spike in blood sugars. It's going to affect your cognitive function. There's a huge connection between what happens in your gut and what happens in your brain. And so if you're getting inflammation or bloating, whatever in your gut, it's going to affect the cognitive function. It's going to probably put you in a brain fog. And then we get the topic of weight gain, right? So you're going to gain more weight, uh, potentially develop a fatty liver. And a lot of these carbs just basically spike your cholesterol. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, the phytic acid in these whole grains um, blocks various minerals. And what's really interesting, and you can look this up, I'll put the links down below, over 10 million children worldwide die of malnutrition each year. And a good percentage of these children die of diarrhea that comes from a zinc deficiency. Now take a wild guess how you would develop a zinc deficiency. Well, number one, um, animal sources of protein are not available, which is high in zinc, that's number one. But number two, cereal, okay, cereal-based diets. A lot of these children, especially under the age of five, are living on cereal. And all that phytic acid can deplete zinc and can set this child up for diarrhea and even a risk of dying, as well as stunted growth and a lot of other problems that are related to the development of our bodies at an early age. Now, what they're doing to try to solve this problem is fermenting some of these grains and giving it to the kids. Now, I don't know how uh, popular this is. And when you ferment the grains for 72 hours, the microbes that develop from this shift in pH, okay, with lactic acid, start to make an enzyme called phytase to break down phytic acid. So this is why when you ferment grains, you'll have less phytic acid and more uh, nutrient absorption, specifically with zinc, magnesium, iron, and calcium. And this is another reason why we ferment our grains for our chickens. We have like 16 chickens and I soak this grain in water for 72 hours and they eat it up. And that way there's less phytic acid, they get more nutrition. All right, and the third point about whole grains is that what it does to your digestive system. Uh, you're gonna get gas, you're gonna get bloated, uh, you're gonna get um, inflammation uh, because the high levels of omega-6 fatty acids irritate the colon you potentially can get SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. You can even develop allergies or even an autoimmune disorder called Hashimoto's, which uh, I put a link down below of that association. So grains are not favorable for your digestive system. Some people can digest refined grains much better, probably because there's a lot less phytic acid and other anti-nutrients in refined grains, and it's easier to process. Of course, the other problem is you're going to just create additional problems with refined grains. Um, so they both have their problems. So if I had a choice between refined grains and whole grains, well, I, I wouldn't have either of them. All right. And then I already mentioned glyphosate, which is an herbicide, which affects the microbiome. There's been an increased association between glyphosate and increased risk of celiac, which is a digestive issue, not to mention a lot of other issues, which I'll have to do another video on later. And then lastly, we have the fortification of these grains. So even though uh, you're eating these whole grain foods, they still sometimes fortify them, right? They enrich them with a few synthetic vitamins. And then they also throw in some iron in there, which 
uh, is not the type of iron that your body can easily assimilate. And that's why certain grains just sit in your gut for a long time because of that iron. And just the type of vitamins that we put are just uh, not the ones that our bodies are designed to absorb. Like they put in folic acid instead of folate. They put in synthetic versions of B vitamins to try to minimize the vitamins that were lost in the process of refining. Now, for those of you that are a little bit skeptical of this video and, and don't have any problem with consuming whole grains, well, go ahead and try to consume mostly whole grains for one month and report back to us on how you did health-wise. Now, if you haven't seen my older video that I did on how to permanently get rid of cravings for bread, it's a little bit comical. You have to check it out. I put it up right here. Check it out.